Thanks to those of you who gave me feedback about my new bench high-powered LED light. Um, and as you can see, I've got it on at the moment and I'm powering it with my Minghee DC to DC converter. And it's on full power, 1.2 amps. Um, it was 300 milliamps per lamp and I have four of them currently. And it's running at 17.5 volts in constant current mode. But you might find that a little bit difficult to see. But if I turn down the voltage there a little bit to about 15 volts, it's a lot easier to see on camera. So I thought it might be worth trying to make an LED dimmer circuit because there's always the risk when you're adjusting on here to go over the parameters if you're using this as a dimmer. So to change the brightness of an LED I need to look at pulse width modulation really. And after a short period of searching I found there's lots of people using 555 timers to uh, dim LEDs and make LEDs brighter. And I found this diagram from rookieelectronics.com uh, on Google Images and you can see it's a fairly simple circuit. The 555 timer is in A stable mode here, pins 6 and 2 are connected, the threshold and the trigger. And there's just one issue on here. This pin here is actually pin 1. Pin 3 is the output going via the LED. So the thing I particularly liked about this circuit is that I had all the bits in my component box already so I didn't need to go out and buy anything. So here's the circuit here and you know it's breadboard prototyping so it's a bit of a, a mess. I have actually used a 1k resistor here on the LED. Um, I am actually using 12 volts from my solar battery bank rather than 9 volts as indicated there. But we can see that we can move the potentiometer and the LED gets brighter and dimmer respectively. Let's see if we can see that on the oscilloscope. I'm probing over the resistor and the LED here. Obviously this is system ground and that's the output of the 555 timer. And as you can see on the digital oscilloscope we've got a very small pulse width here and as I change that part you should be able to see the LED gets a little bit brighter but more importantly the pulse width gets considerably longer until the point where it's almost fully on. But this is fine for a little LED but my LEDs are considerably more powerful so I'm going to need to swap out this LED output here, oh, the oscilloscope's gone off, and change it for a MOSFET. So looking in my components box, I've got a couple of different n channel MOSFETs here. We've got the IRF540N and the IRF3205. Now, I need to work out which one's the best one to use here. So if I look at the data sheets, the RF540N, i just move that into shot. It's got a RDS on the resistance to turn it on of 44 milliohms. And as I'm using this as a switch and a fairly rapidly changing switch, I need a really low on resistance. Uh, it's capable of 100 volts, 33 amps, while well, I'm well within those parameters. It also stipulates a gate threshold voltage of between 2 and 4 volts. But it's worth noting that, that uh, the on resistance that we looked at earlier is only achieved when you use 10 volts or more. Well, that's fine because my LEDs are powered at 17 volts and that's within the 555's tolerance as well so I'm looking to switch this MOSFET on with something approaching 17 volts 
the IRF 3205, which has a on resistance of just 8 milliohms, better than the last one. It can handle less voltage, but plenty in this application. 110 amps, I won't be getting anywhere near that. But if we just scroll down a little bit further, uh, there's that 8 milliohms on resistance, and that's at 10 volts. Well, we should be putting more than 10 volts through this. And the threshold voltage is between 2 and 4 volts. And that's easy to achieve from the output of the 555 timer. So now you can see the MOSFET is in circuit. I've got a bridge here from the output pin to the gate on the MOSFET, just behind the LED. Uh, the LED is connected directly to 12 volts into the drain pin of the MOSFET and the source pin is connected via a resistor for now just to protect that little LED. And now I can still adjust the potentiometer and dim the LED and I'm aware that that's happening through the MOSFET which of course has very little current going through it so it's not getting warm at all so now I know my circuit is working I need to now transfer this onto a bit of perf board or something like that so this is the design I've come up with um, I find these 555 uh, pins in really difficult positions but anyway it's a bit of a mess but this is what I've come up with the power comes here in here on the bottom left hand side and the LEDs will be powered up here via the MOSFET you should be able to see that these tracks are cut straight down here in the middle to isolate things from each other to make sure it all works and just one other track cut there and between those two wires there so I'm gonna get on and build this and I'll show you the results so there it is completed. Um, the MOSFET is a bit close to these connectors, but never mind. Next time, perhaps I'll give it a bit more space. Uh, the DC to DC adapter is set to 17 volts and just 236 milliamps, uh, much less than it normally would supply. I'm obviously using my old lights above the bench at the moment. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Okay, well they're working. And I can turn them down and turn them up. Let me just turn off the other old bench lights. So we can go from really quite dim. Up to nice and bright. So if I increase the um, current here on the adapter, go to 800, there we go, and now I can adjust them and see that screen, however I think it is causing some interference on the video. So now with my uh, JYE Tech digital oscilloscope on the output of the 555 here you can see that the pulse width is very small and the lights are very dim and if I just increase that you can see that the pulse width gets larger and larger until it's on all the time although it is a little bit hard to see when the lights are at full brightness but of course that's why I made a dimming circuit the only issue I've got now is that this is making quite a bit of noise and that's no good for recording videos so this certainly does dim high powered LEDs it fulfills its brief there are some points in there where it all gets a bit noisy uh, but that might be the fault of this DC to DC converter. I'll try it again perhaps in the future with another one. But it certainly, like I said, fulfills its brief and works well. So we can adjust the lights on the bench so that we can see screens and LED readouts. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video enough to give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.
Thanks for watching.